Alright, it's time for the last effect command in ProTracker. And as I mentioned in the first episode, the E command is quite extensive and it contains a whole lot of different things and although I'll just cover them briefly, this episode will be a bit longer than the previous ones. So I'll put time codes in the description to help you navigate to a specific E command. Let's begin. First I'll load a module called Laikabos and it sounds like this. The first off is the E0 command. And this will set a low pass filter to on or off. And this will not affect your sample data, only play the song with a low pass filter added to it. And since this is a global command, you can put this command in whatever track you like. I'll just go with track number one here. The parameters for E0 is just 0 and 1, but all equal numbers will set it to on and all uneven to off. For compatibility reasons, I think it's best to stick to 0 and 1. So the filter is set to off by default, so to add it, we need to add E00 here. Let's listen what happens on row 16 when I hit play. The filter is now set to on for the duration of this song, until you turn it off with the EO1 command. Now let's clear this song and I'll go to sample number D to show you the next command. The E1 and E2 commands work pretty much as the 1 and 2 commands, but will only affect the first tick of the note. This means you'll be able to make a much slower slide than with the 1 and 2 commands. I'll put a note here in track 2 and do a really really slow portamento up with the E1 command. And to make this even noticeable, I'm going to choose a value for E1 that's uh, 3. Listen. And the E2 command works the same way when sliding down. But I'll show you what I think is the most common use for this command. I'll cut away all of these commands, change E13 to E11 here, and put an identical note here in track 3. So, E11 here will do a slight pitch shift and together with the other note create a cool phaser effect. Listen. Alright, moving to the E3 command, which is a passive command, meaning the command itself doesn't affect the note, but it changes the behavior of the 3 command. So I'll remove this note here and I'll slide this note to C3 here with a 3 command and a low value. Let's go with 5 and give it time to reach the note like this. Listen. The E3 command has only two values. Either it's on or it's off and it's set with 1 or 0. Actually anything but 0 will set it to on but for compatibility reasons I think it's best to stick to just 0 and 1. So what does on mean? Well, by default the slide will be smooth, changing the pitch evenly throughout the slide. But if we set it to on, the slide will be in half notes instead. And the E3 command can be put anywhere in the track before the 3 command, so I'll just put it here. E3, 1. And listen closely to the slide now. But this command also has a tick 0 bug, which means the slide is not handled on tick 0. This becomes more clear when using a higher pitched sample and a slower slide. So I'll change this sample to sample 9 and I'll do the slide slower 301 here. Listen. So enough of this command. Let's go to the next one. The E4 command is also a passive command and it changes the behavior of the vibrato. By default, the 4 command will create a sine wave vibrato, which will be re-triggered if a new note is played. This can be changed with the E4 command, and since this command is also affected by the zero tick bug, I'll change the speed to 5 here. I'll also go a bit slower, let's go with 80 BPM. I'm going to use sample number 9 for this, and I'm going to put a note in track 4 here, and I'm going to start vibrating down here with the 8A parameter and I'm going to keep it vibrating for a while. Let's listen to this sine wave. Now we have three different waveforms to choose from. It's sine wave, it's ramp down and it's square wave. And I'll show you how these sound. So E40 means sine wave, that's what we just heard, the default value. And E41 means ramp down. 
it sounds like this. And E42 means square wave and it sounds like this. But let's go back to the sine wave again. So E40 here and I'll put some notes here to interfere with the waveform. Listen. As you can hear, the waveform of the vibrato is restarted every time a new note is played. And to avoid this, we need to use the command E44. This means set waveform to sine wave, but don't re-trigger if a new note is played. It sounds like this. And it's the same thing with the ramp down, it's E45 and the square wave E46. Now let's clear all and start over again. Now let's use a sample that's easier to our ears. And I'll put a note in track 1 here and one in track 2. The E5 command is fine tune and this command needs to go on the note. This means you cannot use this command to slide things up or down by adding several E5 commands after each other. And there are 16, well more like 15 different values for fine tune and they are as follows. As you can see, the order of negative fine tune values is reversed, but don't worry, chances are you'll never use this command anyway. I'll give you a quick example before moving on to a much more useful command. Let's go with E53 and listen. Yep, that's terrible. Now, let's clear the song again and I'll put a little melody here in track 1. The E6 command has two sets of parameters, where E60 is set loop start and 1 through F is how many times to loop. I'll loop the first 8 notes here by putting the loop start here on row 0 and on row 7 I'm putting E61, because I only want to loop this once before moving on to the next row. Listen. Unfortunately, you can't do inner loops in the same track, but you can do it in separate tracks. So let's go with the loop start here and let's repeat this four times. Let's listen. So the inner loop is played twice and the outer loop determines when it's time to move on to the next row. So what happens if I put an identical loop in track number two here? E60 and E61 here. Listen. They overwrite each other. And what happens if I change the number of loops to two here? How many times will this melody loop now? Pause the video and make a guess. Are you done guessing? Let's hit play. Did you guess five? And what happens if I put a loop that's both inside and outside the loop? Let's find out. E60 and I'll go with E63 here. Let's listen. Alright, so one last thing. I'll delete all commands in track 2 and the commands in track 1 as well. And I'll move that loop start down here. And I'll also break this pattern with a D command here. I'll create a new pattern here, a fresh one to jump to. And down here I'm going to put the loop, E61. This is to show you what happens if you try to loop start in one pattern and try to loop it in another one. So I'll go back to the first one, hit play. ProTracker will remember the last position you set to E60, whether it's on the same pattern or not. So yeah, this is kinda cool, but I wouldn't recommend using more than one loop in one pattern at a time, because many replayers don't handle this the same way as ProTracker. Alright, so let's move on to the next D command. The E7 command changes the waveform for the 7 command, that's tremolo. And this command is identical to the E4 command, so instead of saying the same thing over again, I'll just give you the different parameters here. If you want some in-depth information, just go back to the E4 command and check out how it works over there. 
the E8 command is allegedly not implemented. However, it most definitely is, and in the worst possible way as well. This command will put a filter on looped samples, and it actually changes the sample data, and there is no way to undo this except reloading the sample. I'll show you how it works, although I have to emphasize that this command is bad news and should never ever be used. So, I'll clear the song, and I'll put a note up here in track number one. And let's put an E8 command here. E8. One for example. So, when row 4 is played, this portion of the sample will be filtered. And if you play the pattern again, this portion of the sample will be filtered again, and again and again, until it's quiet. So, never ever use this command. Lucky for us, 8-bit Bubsy decided to remove this command in the clone, since it has no use and could potentially destroy your song. If you are an Amiga though, this command will work. There are quite a few modules out there using this command, and they are probably all demo scene related, since this command is used to sync demos to the music. I'll explain more in the description. So, let's clear this and move on to the next E command. The E9 command will play the note a number of given times in the same row. For example, E91 will retrig the note on every tick and E93 every third tick. This command is useful when tracking slow modules and you for example want to do a double bass drum or hi-hat when you really don't have room for it. I'll give you an example by loading a bass drum and let's go with the same snare that we used earlier. I think it was snare 1, right? So sample 2 and snare 1. So let's put some drums in track 1 here. Listen. Okay, we need to go much slower. Let's go with FOC, that's speed 12, and a BPM of, I don't know, something low. Listen. That's much better. So, let's say I want to do this bass drum on row number 3 here twice. E, 9, 6, because we're going in the speed of 12, so I want the note to be triggered on tick 0 and on tick 6. Listen. Now I want the second bass drum here to be in triplets, so E9, and I'm going to divide 12 by 3, so 4 here. Now this note will be triggered on tick 0, tick 4, and tick 8. Listen. And that's it for the E9 command, so let's move on to the EA and EB commands. EA and EB are very similar to the A command, where EA will fade things in and EB will fade things out. But these commands only apply to the first tick of the note, which means you can do a much slower fade than with the A command. And since the A command is kind of rough to do slow fades with, the EA and EB commands are more suitable. And this is probably why these commands are among the most frequently used E commands. I'll give you a quick example. Let's go with a chord sample. And I'm putting it in track number 2 here. And I'm going to set the volume to zero first. The parameter for these commands is the amount of volume to increase or decrease on every row. And since the default and maximum volume is 40 up here, that's 64 in decimal, I'll need 64 EA1 commands to reach it, or let's say 16 EA4 commands. But let's fill this up with EA1 commands. So, EA1, Control B, Control C, and Control J. Listen. That's a slow fade in. Now, let's move on to the EC command. The EC command will only play the specified number of ticks of a note. EC1, for example, will only play the first out of six ticks when going in the default pattern speed of six. I'll give you an example. Let's go with the rubber bass again. And I'll put a note here. Let's go with EC3. This will play the first three ticks and then cut the volume to zero. Listen. EC0 will not play anything at all. And is equivalent to C00. And this means the note will continue to play silently after being cut. So you can always revive it again with, for example, the A command like this. Let's fade it up really quickly. Listen. 
and if you define a number of ticks that's equal to or higher than the pattern speed, let's go with EC6 here and FO6, this note will not be cut at all. Listen. Alright, let's move on to the next command, which is note delay. The ED command will wait a given number of ticks before playing the note. And this means that if there is already a note playing in the track, this will not be interrupted by the new note until the specified tick is reached. Alright, so let's clear the song and add a couple of notes here. And let's delay this note with 5 ticks. So this note will not be played until tick 5. Listen. And if you define a number that's equal to or higher than the pattern speed, let's go with ED6 here, this command will be ignored. Listen. But believe it or not, this is actually where it gets really interesting. I can't believe it took me over 20 years to find this quirk. The thing is that if you define a new note here, let's go with G3, this ED command will be bypassed, but the note will still be changed. And uh, this invalid ED command will still delay the note corresponding to the pattern speed, so the change won't happen until the next row. But the cool thing is that the sample will not be re-triggered. This makes it possible to change the note while keeping the current offset of the sample. Okay, so it's a bit technical, but I'll show you how easy this is to use. Let's load a sample that would suffer from re-triggering. Listen. I've prepared a melody and I'm going to paste it here in track 3. Listen. As you can hear, the sample is re-triggered on every note. And this is where we normally use the 3 command with the highest parameter to slide from note to note to keep the sample offset. The problem is that this slide will sound very sucky when sliding between really high and really low notes. And to compare, I'm going to show you how this works. 3FF, and I'm going to fill this track with 3s, so sliding between the notes. Listen. So yeah, that wasn't very sexy. Let's clear the song, and I'll paste the melody here again. So now I want to put the ED command on every note instead. And an easy way to do this is to choose an empty track like this, put the command you'd like, ED and something higher than 3 in this case, I'll just go with EDF, using Control B on this empty row, going up and cutting it away with Control X, and then I can just paste the command on this note, and this note, over and over again, all the way down here. And since these invalid ED commands will delay the notes one row, I have to push all of these notes up one row. And this is easily done by using shift backspace like this. Now, this note will be played on this row. So it's delayed one row, but the first note is played normally. Listen. So yeah, that's a really cool feature, but unfortunately this bug is incompatible with most replayers. But since it works in ProTracker 2.3D, shouldn't it also work in replayers? I think so, and would love to see it implemented as soon as possible. But in the meantime, don't use this awesome command, because it will probably not work outside of ProTracker. Alright, moving to the EE command. The EE command is global and will make the pattern stay on the row a number of specified times. So EE1 will for example double the time of the original row. I'll show you how this works by loading the rubber base again. And I'm putting it in track number 3 here. And let's fade this out down here with the A01 command. And let's add another 15 rows to this row number 5 here. So this row will be played 16 times in total. Listen. Another cool thing about the EE command is that the zero tick bug I've mentioned earlier is now gone. This means you can actually do a smooth tremolo like this. Let's add 7, 4, A here and listen. <sighs> Alright ProTracker friends, it's time for the final boss of ProTracker. So let's clear everything we've done and start over. Let's go. 
The EF command is very uncommon and a few people know how to use it and I should probably just tell you not to use this command since it modifies your sample data and there are very few correct implementations for it. Not even ProTracker's own replayer handles this the same way. So in a way this command is used by ProTrackers for ProTrackers. But it's way too cool to just skip so here we go. First of all you need this table of numbers. This is something that's predefined in ProTracker, so don't pay too much attention to the apparent randomness of these numbers. I'm going to let this table be here during the rest of this episode. The EF command only works on looped samples, and what it does is start a counter that increases with our defined value on every tick, and when it reaches 128, one byte of the loop in the sample will be flipped. The counter is then reset, and will start counting again until it reaches 128 again. So yeah, it sounds kind of messy, but let me show you how this works. First I'm going to create the sample by increasing the length of this empty sample here to 40. That's 64 bytes. And let's up the volume too. And let me put a loop on this one. Uh, let's make it loop the whole sample. It looks like this. And here's a nice feature in the PC Mac clone. In the sample editor you can use your right mouse button to draw your own waveform like this. And to make this more understandable, I'm going to draw a somewhat straight sawtooth here. Let's go. So let's put this in track number 3 here. It sounds like this. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go in the tick speed of F10 here. That's 16 ticks per row. Now, if I add EFF on this row here, ProTracker will check for the number corresponding to F in the table, which is 128. And since one byte is flipped every time the counter reaches 128, 16 bytes will be flipped on every row here. So in order to flip the whole loop, we need four EFF commands like this. And to pause this counter, we use the EF0 command. And let's silence this note with C00 here. Let's hit play. And as you will see here, the loop is now completely flipped. One weird thing you should be aware of though is that the first byte of the loop is flipped last. Let's change these parameters to EFE instead. This will only flip half of the loop since EFE corresponds to 64 in the table, so 128 will only be reached every second tick. When we start, the sample looks like this. Let's flip it. Now it looks like this. So this is how far the counter went and as you can see the first byte wasn't flipped but the rest of them were. Now to go back to the original waveform we can just play the pattern again and flip it back. Listen. And to fix this first byte thing we can manually flip the first byte of the sample like this. Or even better, set it to zero, because this will make it more compatible with replayers. Now, another thing you want to know is that every time a sample is triggered, the counter will restart. So if I put another sample here, let's go with D3, the counter will restart and start flipping the sample back. So it looks like this when we start, and if I play, it's like nothing happened. Okay, now for the tricky part. This EF counter will continue to add the specified table value on every row, even if the rows are empty. However, it will do nothing on tick 0. So I'll delete these ones and let's go with a tick speed of F08 in this case. I'll change this parameter to 8 here. That's the number 16 in the table and just let it count by itself without any commands for another 3 rows before pausing it. Now, since 8 times 16 is 128, one byte per row should be flipped, but since tick zero is left out of these empty rows, this is what happens. Only three bytes were flipped, and this is why. These green numbers show where the counter restarts and the flip happens because of the zero tick thing. To compensate for this, we need to use a value that's multiplied with the tick speed minus one equals 128 or more, and this is where those random numbers are very helpful. So, since only 7 of these 8 ticks are affected on the empty rows, we need to use the command EF9 here. That's the number 19 in the table, and 7 times 19 is 133. And once again, take a look at the green numbers. 
Sure, the counter will restart on the last tick, but it's now flipping one byte per row. That's perfect. And now, time for the really, really cool stuff. Since we now have a fix for the missing tick, we can actually add notes and even effects to the track like this. Just remember to remove the sample number, which will make the EF counter start over again. Like this. I made you guys a pattern to show you this magic in action. Take a look at this. As you can see, I'm using the default tick speed of F06 here, and I'm using EFA on the first row to flip one byte per row, and to compensate for the missing ticks, I'm using EFB on this row. This pattern uses one sample only, it's our 64 byte sample, and since track 3 here manages all the flipping, there is no need to use it anywhere else to change the sample. I'll silence the other tracks for now and add the other as we go. And this concludes this tutorial. I had lots of fun making it and thank you all for watching and commenting and please continue to comment, keep tracking and I'll see you soon. Let's hit play.